All right, we're back on the roof, and today we're gonna to be using Lapsit to take time-lapse photography with our smartphones. Lapsit is my absolute favorite tool for your smartphone, and what's great is it works on both the iPhone and Android, so it's always gonna work. We'll have links to download it in the description. Guys, I don't know if you like this or not, but I ran over my tripod. So today I'm using a C-stand just for my iPhone because I don't have an actual tripod for my iPhone, but whatever works. So we're gonna go ahead and launch Lapsit. Now I've tested a lot of different smartphone apps for time-lapse, and this is by far my absolute favorite, and I'm gonna show you why. But one thing right off the bat is the user interface isn't the greatest in the world, it's pretty clumsy. But let's just focus on these bottom three things. You have your projects, your capture, and videos. So projects doesn't do anything. It's completely useless button, but it'll just, you can see it right here in this project panel. Um, if you want some tutorials on how to use it, you can use those, but I'm gonna explain it to you right now. Then we have the capture feature. The capture feature is where we're gonna do most of the work press back, and we have our, our previous videos. This is gonna show us all the exported videos that we have. But let's go into capture and let's take a look at the settings. I'm gonna set this up on the tripod. Always take these off before you shoot a time-lapse. Otherwise you can get wind and it'll blow it around. You'll have shake in your time-lapses and you don't want that. Hey, do me a favor. And if you're liking this video so far, please consider subscribing. It'll help me out a lot. So here we have like two rows of settings. We have all of these settings over here. And then we have these settings over here first. Let's just work our way from the top to bottom. We have an option for HDR enabled or disabled. If you wanna take HDR photos, I typically do not recommend doing that when we're doing our time lapses. It's just extra steps that we don't need to worry about. Location enabled dis or disabled. I love to have it enabled on my phone anyway, just that way I can always see where I was, especially this is really helpful if I'm traveling. For raw, I love using raw. I highly recommend it. Um, depth. I don't ever do this. This isn't able to like, this is to activate the feature like when we do focusing on um, on our phone. Bracket, this is where you'd want to do an HDR time-lapse. It's basically going to, um, enabling it will basically turn three different photos and you can set the number of brackets and you can also tell it like how much you want the exposure to be done. Um, you can press it up or down. It's pretty tactile so you can actually feel each number. It would be better if they had a thing that would display it, but I'm not gonna shoot with brackets enabled anyway. We'll get to shutter and focus here in a second. Let's just turn on a grid so that way we can kind of see our framing. I want it kind of lined up. Now I have this, perfect. Onion skin is a really cool feature that for stop motion. Um, I really use it all the time when I'm doing stop motion stuff, but not for time lapses. So we'll not worry about that. Save path device. This is if you wanna save it to your smartphone or if you wanna save it to your cloud, I have it to save to device. Image format, it doesn't give us an option for that. We have different color formats. I'm just gonna keep it on sRGB standard. Um, stabilization, I only recommend trying this uh, if you're gonna do some hype lapses. Low lights, this is gonna be great if you want to do like a sunset holy grail time lapse or you know stars. Uh, white balance, now let's go ahead and set this. So you can change your white balance to whatever you want. You have all full control here. You can measure it. Okay, it doesn't support that. Um, but you have an option for continuous, which it'll constantly read the output and then update it. This is really good for doing sunrises or sunsets when the white balance is gonna change dramatically. But what we wanna do is change it to fixed. There's not gonna be a lot of change right now. So we want to keep our white balance steady. Same thing with focus. Focus, this is an area that we can really run into troubles. If we have it on continuous focus and something goes in front and then goes away, you'll see it hunting all the time in between these photos. Doubt it's gonna happen here, but for practice, this is um, something that we can just fix by going to fixed. Shutter, this is a really great feature to have this much control over. A lot of times I'm gonna recommend getting motion blur. So we want our shutter to be wide open. Now in order to do that, we would need a neutral density filter, but I do not have one for my smartphone. So we're just gonna leave it as is, but we wanna make sure that it's fixed. That's the most important thing. So then we can just go ahead and click when we're ready and it's gonna adjust the white, as you can see, it's gonna adjust like the camera exposure and the focus. And as long as it's fixed, we're good to go. So now I think we've handled all of the settings in this tab. You also have the option to get a little bit more real estate, but as you can see, you don't really get any more photo stuff, so kind of pointless. All right, so now let's look at these features. This is where this app really becomes worth its weight in gold. The resolution for full sensor, 
always recommend turning that on unless you have a very specific reason. You can schedule the time here. So you could say like, hey, I wanted to have a, a two second countdown timer. That's always a nice to have if you have that ability. Here I do, so let's go ahead and use that. Then we have our interval section. I'm just jumping up to the top. We have interval section. Again, we have stop motion up here. This is great, you know, so all you'd have to do is take a photo and then the next time you are ready to take a photo, you can just press it again. And this is, you also hook it up with like a Bluetooth controller to activate it because you don't typically want to be touching your camera all the time. We have millisecond, which 100 milliseconds is one tenth of a second, which is just way too fast in my opinion. But we do have second, which is really good, minute and hour, so we can shoot, you know, normal time lapse stuff. It does give you some extra controls, which is cool, but I don't typically use those. What I use is typically the seconds or the minutes. Let's go back down here. We also have this option to use the different cameras, which is pretty cool. Um, I can use the back dual camera, the front camera, uh, the back telephoto camera, and that's pretty nice. We're gonna probably start with that. I like that. Okay, I like that. I can see the Chrysler building, the Edge, One World Trade Center. That's, that's nice, that's nice right there. Recap, so when we turn on this raw setting, one of the things we'll notice is we will not have the ability to change the image format. If we turn it on disabled, then we'll notice we can have this image format, we can have JPEG or high efficiency. To be honest, sometimes I have difficulty using the HEIC uh, photos on different platforms, so I just use JPEG, but really I, I shoot in RAW. I would recommend just using JPEG. Might take up a little bit more storage, but it's not that big of a deal. So let's go back into RAW and let's start shooting some photos. Now I'm looking at the sky here and I gotta be honest, the clouds look stuck. And because the clouds look stuck, meaning they're not really moving at all, like if I just stare at it, it, it's like watching paint dry. So I'm gonna want a long interval. And the interval is the amount of time that takes place between each photo. And the reason why I want a long interval is so that way I have something moving. Because if there's nothing moving throughout the time lapse, it might as well just be a still photo and there's no point in taking a time lapse. We need some movement. And it could be as subtle as, it could be the shadows, it could be the sun, it could be the clouds, it could be people moving, but we just need some movement. Otherwise, there's no point in shooting the time lapse. <laughs> a good rule of thumb is when we have clouds that look stuck in the sky, anywhere between five to 10 seconds, I'm gonna shoot with a 10 second interval, so let's set that up. Basically, the slower something's moving, the longer the interval we need. The faster something's moving, think like people, people in crowded places, cars in traffic, the shorter the time-lapse interval we want. So with this, because of the clouds, we're gonna use a 10 second interval and we're gonna see what that looks like. If you have any questions about trying to figure out what the best time-lapse interval for your scene is, I have a video dedicated to that right here. Check it out. I almost forgot to talk about the export settings. This is my absolute favorite thing about this app. Let's take a look. So if we go into our raw settings, you'll see that it's kind of looks blue. It's just because for whatever reason, this camera can't read our raw settings but it's fine. At the top, there's this little blue icon. We just click on that and it'll give us our different output settings. We can put our output resolution. I always do 4K Ultra HD. I wanna have like the highest output. Frame rate, 30 is fine. Output high quality, I'll put it on extreme. And then for the output format, this really depends on where you're gonna be editing. Since I'm gonna be editing on my computer, I export in .mov. .mov currently, is easier to edit on the computer, whereas .mp4 is a smaller compressed file, is for saving space and editing on your phone. So it really just depends where you're gonna be editing this. And then the output resolution, I'll just do the same, so that way every single time, this is the exact same. So now what we can do is go to Frames Catalog, select all, and then export it as a zip. And it's gonna ask you if you wanna confirm, and then we can just airdrop it or transfer it over to our computer to finish it in editing. And if you wanna learn how to edit a time-lapse with a professional workflow, I have a video right here explaining you my exact process from beginning to end. So now here's a way to export it as, if you shot it as a JPEG sequence. Just go to the time-lapse that you wanna export. Let's just click on this one. And then here you'll see the export icon. Just go ahead and click export. It'll go right to your phone and you are all done. That's it. 
Hey, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it helped you learn how to improve your time-lapse game on your smartphone. Have you used the Lapsit app before? If so, let me know what you think of it or if you have a different app that you'd recommend. I'd love to hear about it and test it out. All right, well, thanks for watching. Happy shooting and I'll see you next time.